Now then YouTube, I am the Toff Man and welcome back to a complete guide on Thorncraft 4. Now, we are rattling through our research like you wouldn't believe and we're going to get to some of the more complicated parts of things as we get some of the more mundane um, researches out of the way. I'm talking about the one cause and such. Uh, I haven't even got anywhere near golems yet so that's going to be interesting when that comes along. Um, but uh, what's coming up next? Well guys, I don't really know because what it showed up for me, this discovery, it says infusion there, mystical, infu uh, mystical fusion. This doesn't make sense to me because I actually started researching a bone wand core and instead I've got infusion. Uh, I don't know if this is a bug or not but I'm going to go with it anyway. Uh, it says that this infusion, this discovery for an infusion here, I've managed to find it with Precantatio and Machina. And uh, it was relatively easy to get, but I, I, I thought for a long time I was looking for bone wand core, so I, I tried the instrumentum and it was like, well, why is that not working? I didn't realise that uh, somewhere along the line, maybe I just got a different discovery and I didn't realise it. But this is infusion, guys. So let's grab that. So that, we've got it. Brilliant. Now, let's go and have a look. This is where things get very, very interesting, guys. They get very, very interesting because this is mystical infusion. This is going to take a while for me to explain and to go through. To get started doing your mystical infusion, the infusion crafting it's called uh, with this, to get all of the special special items within Thorncraft, you're going to need a few things. The first is the runic matrix. Let's have a look at that. This is how you craft a runic matrix. You need the arcane stone blocks all in the corners here with any type of shard and a ender pearl in the middle with 40 of the Ardo aspect and that will get you the runic matrix. If you're unfamiliar with how to make arcane stone blocks that is how you make arcane stone blocks. It's simply stone around a shard with one of uh, terror and one ignis and that's how you get arcane stone blocks. So once you've got yourself the runic matrix what do you need next? Well, you're going to need some arcane pedestals as well, guys. And these are crafted as follows. More arcane stone blocks in the, sh in the eye shape with five air for each of these. Now, these actually, it crafts two. Um, well, I think it crafts two. I, it might only craft one. I don't know. There's a bug with the thermonomicon at the minute that shows two instead of, uh, instead of one. So, either which way, guys, it crafts an arcane pedestal. You're going to need round about four of these, I think, at the start. But you can have up to eight. And I would suggest that you do actually get eight as, as quickly as you can, just so you can get to the uh, the most advanced stuff. Once you've got that, what else do you need? Well, it's not as simple as just getting this runic matrix, getting these uh, arcane pedestals, and then you can fly off and do your stuff. You're going to want to use your arcane furnace here. The uh, uh, is that called? Is it called an arcane furnace? Let me just familiarise myself with that with that block again, guys. Now, chemical furnace, that's the one. You're going to want to use this to actually break down uh, numerous amounts of, of uh, different aspects into jars, into warded jars, because you're going to need Essentia. You're going to need a good amount of Essentia with, uh, with, with this infusion crafting. So, how do we actually go about and where do you start after you've crafted your matrix and after you've crafted your arcane pedestals? What do you do then? Alright, you're going to want to create something called the Infusion Altar, and this is how you go about doing it. This mystical construct here shows you how to do it. You're going to need one arcane pedestal, four arcane stone bricks. You can actually make those by just normal uh, arcane bricks there. Uh, you're going to want some arcane stone blocks as well, and the runic matrix with empty space all around it at the top there. So why don't we get this stuff ready, and uh, I'll plonk it down, and you can see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the first layer. You're going to want your arcane stone bricks as follows, with the uh, pedestal in the middle. You're going to want then your arcane stone blocks on top of these. And you're going to want, finally, your runic matrix placed above that, just like that. Right, now your construct is ready to go. You're going to need a wand that's got quite a few stuff in it, and I'm going to need something to actually fill my uh, my wand up. I'll just be I'll be right back. Okay, it already seems that I've actually got what I need inside my wand. So, now you've got your construct built. It looks a little bit like this. 
Uh, what you need to do, you don't click on any of these, you don't click on the altar, you click on the runic matrix with your ones, just right click on there. How awesome does that look? I've got to say guys, as an R, it never fails to surprise me, never fails to surprise me. This is a fantastic looking bot. A couple of visual issues, I don't know if that's Optifine, I don't know if I've even got Optifine on. Yes, I have got Optifine. It might be Optifine. It could just be because it's... Uh, the same thing happens to double chests and stuff like that. Um, other than that, guys, this is fantastic. This is where the real magic starts with uh, Thorncraft is the infusion crafting system. Now, we haven't actually unlocked anything that we can craft just yet, but I'm going to go through uh, how to actually use the, uh, the Arcane... Pe the... Um, infusion crafting system so okay you're gonna want to place your arcane pedestals as symmetrical as possible so this is a good a good example of a symmetrical uh, system here the reason why is if this isn't symmetrical then bad things can happen uh, when you come along to crafting a particular item because you're forcing a lot of magical energy into one particular item that's on top of the pedestal here, it kind of uh, it, it can create some bad things. Items can get knocked off the pedestals. It can create flux and all sorts and, and all sorts of other different things as well. So you want to keep these as symmetrical as possible when crafting. Now, if say for example an item that you place in the middle here needs four different items or needs two different items. I don't think you'll get one that needs two different items because maybe you'll get one that gets four different items and you've got eight pedestals. Okay? What you're gonna need to do is um, what you're gonna need to do is place your items symmetrically as well. So say for example you've got something in the middle there that create that needs two items. Instead don't put one item on here and one item on here. Instead, put one item on here and one item on the opposite one, which is over there. Um, okay, so how to set up an, an eight pedestal one? Well, simply like this. Oops. How the heck did I manage to do that? No idea. So that's eight pedestals, all nice and symmetrical with each other. If you're going to be uh, crafting something that requires four pieces of, uh, of items, really, you'll want to have one there and one there. They are classed as opposite each other. Not there and there, but there and there. That's to reduce the amount of flux and bad things that it can create. Um, there is another way of doing this as well. Tallow candles. If you place tallow candles around the area, this also limits the effect or limits the amount of flux that's actually given out by this thing. It, uh, it stabilizes it a lot more. The other one that you can use, you can use uh, mob skulls. You can use skelly skulls and uh, with the skelly skulls and stuff like that as well. I can, you can also use these uh, crystals. So you've got the crystal clusters. You can use those as well around here. And they will do a similar job. Now what you will also want is warded jars uh, around the place with the different essentia inside it. Because when you craft something in here, it's going to pull the essentia from the warded jars first to be able to use that. And then, of course, it's going to go through the whole thing of... Uh, of putting all the energy into this uh, this one particular item. But we'll go in more into detail when I'm actually uh, crafting something that I've managed to find in the research. But for the moment, guys, that is how you set up your infusion crafting system. And uh, in future episodes, it might even be the next item. In fact, no, I will do that. In the next, the next thing that I do as a research thing will be something that we can craft in this infusion altar. Okay, so the next piece of research, like I said, is something that we're going to use the infusion crafting for. That is the shovel of the earth mover. We've managed to find this with Instrumentum, Fabrico, and Terra. Nice one. Shovel of the earth mover. Let me just come out of creative mode a second while I learn this. Wonderful. You can see it's right here. 
And the arcane infusion, as you can see there, that's what method it uses to craft it. You're going to need earth shard. Earth, I don't think that's two, guys. That is one. Uh, there's a, it must be a bug at the moment with uh, with with the thermonomicon. There's earth shard, earth shard, diamond, and a great wood log. So you can see there's only four different items, and we've got eight pedestals over there. So this is a good a good a good way of showing you what what how to set it up. And a thormium shovel in the middle. That is the item that you're going to be infusing. You're also going to need five arbor, eight fabrico, four lucrum. 4 Metallum, 7 Precantatio, 19 Terra, and 6 Vitreous. Remember guys, that when you're using the, uh, the Arcane Infusion, the Infusion Crafting System, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, it's not exactly easy to get set up in the first place because of the amount of uh, essentials that you're going to need for particular items. You can also see an instability value here which is negligible, which means it's a very, very small chance of, uh, of getting some kind of instability. But the way that we've set it up should be absolutely fine. Alright, here we are. We have our setup quite nicely. We've got our arcane trinkets around the sides here. Um, now, we've got our items. Remember, Thormium Shovel needs to go in the middle there. Is it me or is that just not showing up? Oh, there it is. It's because I'm on uh, fast graphics. <laughs> and when it goes like that, you can't see it properly for a good few minutes. But it is there, guys. I've seen it. I don't know why that's probably up to fine. It really is. It's probably up to fine. Okay, uh, should we go to see if we can do fancy graphics? We should be able to do fancy graphics, in all honesty. There we are. We can see the damn thing now. Brilliant. Uh, we've also want to put our items around the edge. And you remember, earth shard, earth shard, diamond, and a great wood log. So, remembering to keep them balanced, we've got a diamond. How does it show it? Opposite is an earth shard. Earth shard. Earth shard. And a great wood log. Now they are classed as opposite each other. We're now ready. Remember guys, if you don't have your essentia around the edge here and uh, it goes to try and try and craft the, uh, the thing, then you will come into a problem because it will get stuck. It will get stuck at a particular part and then it will be like, uh, and then bad things can happen, guys. So make sure that you've got your essentia around the edge and then, what does it say to do? I'm sure it just says to uh, whack the matrix with a wand, I believe. Longer the crafting takes. The longer crafting continues due to unresolved problems like the lack of vis or dropped items, the greater of a chance of something bad happening. So... Just remember that. Infusion crafting. Um, once all the required essentia have been infused into the target object, the other objects will have the only two. Hmm. Let's say it somewhere. Once all this is gathered, you can click on the runic matrix with a wand to start the crafting process. So why don't we go ahead and do that right now? This is going to be fun, guys. This is going to be fun. And you can see it's pulling all the Essentia into what it needs. This is fantastic. This never fails to amaze me. Every time I see it, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I'm glad I've got fancy graphics on for this as well. Now remember, keep an eye on the pedestals. Make sure nothing drops off. I think it's getting the items sucked in. There it is. It is. And then eventually... Ta-da! You have your Shovel of the Earth Mover. This has to be one of the coolest machines in the entire Minecraft modded world. Shovel of the Earth Mover. There you go. That's how you craft it. How... What does it... You, what is it used for? Alright guys, well, simply put, it works pretty much as similar as what the last Shovel of, Shovel of the Earth Mover did in Tharmcraft 3. It will dig a 3x3 three three area when you uh, dig down into the earth, and if you right click on the side of a block, it will attempt to place a 3x3 three three section of the same material as long as you've got those blocks in your inventory. And if you remember, you can hold shift and it will function like a normal shovel as well. So why don't we test that out guys?
I'm in creative, which is why that did that. <laughs> there we are. That's gone downwards though. Brilliant. And it all gets sucked towards you as well. Remember, oh nice. There you go. Now if you right click, like I said. Oh. Why is it not doing that? There we are. That's because I'm trying to do it the wrong way around. There we are, look. If you right click, as long as you've got the box in your inventory, it will go ahead and do that. That is a shovel of the earth mover and the introduction to the infusion crafting. How awesome is that thing? Really, how awesome is that thing? If you've enjoyed this video and you have liked what you've seen and if this has been informative and if this has made life easier for you, then please do leave a like on this video. It does massively help the series as a whole and also helps my channel massively as well. And um, it would be really, really much appreciated, guys. It really would. So until next time, I've been the Tough Man. Enjoy your infusion crafting. And as always, stay safe.